my maiden name was Sheila Bose, and uh, I am 60, I've just completed 60, uh, 72 years in February. I'm running 73. You were working with other women here to help women who'd been abducted or molested huh. in Calcutta. Yeah. You, were, you were telling me, tell me again about what happened to some of the women in what became East Pakistan. From East Pakistan. You see, they were in a tremendous trauma because their men flo- folk were slaughtered, they were raped, and they just left the men, men folk just left them and ran away. There were some abduction, we should not call it abduction, the women were eloped. They had some relationship between Hindu boys, uh, Muslim boys and Hindu girls, and they took this opportunity and they ran away. That you cannot call abduction. Okay? But, in, uh, so when they came here, they came here absolutely with one clothes, some with some little babies, some pregnant, some this, some that. And uh, we used to uh, give them shelter and we used to take care of them. We borrowed, uh, we used to collect clothes from people to, you know, to give them clothes and things like that. And there was a relief center uh, from the government of India, I mean, uh, East, West, East, West Bengal government. So we could manage and we used to collect funds from the local people also. We got lots of help from the local people. But could those women ever hope to marry again? Um, you, you see, that could be later on, but not. I was too young at that time, and I never, at that period, for last uh, after this uh, partition, I don't think uh, within five years' time anybody got married. I don't. I had. I. I am sorry. I won't be able to give that statistics. Then Nidulas, and then Nidula Sarabai came here, and she was quite happy. And uh, seeing me uh, working, I don't know what, she approached my mother. Because Sarabai family and my parents' family, they were very close friends. So she said that I'm going to open an orphanage of the abducted women in Jammu. So I want Sheila to work there. So my mother said that uh, she can go right up to Delhi and will be under your uh, protection, but not to Jammu. You give me this word and you can take her. So she went away. I went later. I joined her later. It was um, uh, in 1950. I went to Delhi. And there she, uh, I started working there with her, with the abducted, recovery of abducted women from West Pakistan. You were helping people to go out and search for women. Yeah. What I tell you how. Um, we got the list from West Pakistan. These are the women abducted. Okay? Muslim women. Muslim women. And we got another list from Indian side that we have, there are Hindu girls abducted. So we send that list, the government of India sent that list to Pakistan and Pakistan said, sent their list to us. So we, we had a dual responsibility. One, to recover Muslim women from India and pressurize the Pakistan government to recover our Hindu women with our particulars and everything which we have given. The district, this is this girl's and father's name and things like that. And uh, it was this organization was Recovery for Abducted Women was directly under Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. Because Mithila Devi very much uh, close to Nehru and uh, uh, she used to tackle the whole situation. And during this time she used to go to Pakistan and she had a very good relationship with Pakistan police and high officials and things like that. And they also appreciated her work in Pakistan as well. How successful was the operation? Um, well, it was very successful because she could stop certain uh, riots or some sort of uh, atrocities during uh, exchange of this thing. She was a very brave lady. But after five years, six years, when she used to insist that these Muslim girls must go back, and sometimes I used to tell her that, why are you pressurizing? Once she lost everything, 
Now she is settled down, having children and husband and this and that. She is settled. She doesn't want to go. Why must she? That is the forest policy. That's not you. That's not your thing to decide. But I felt as a young girl, I felt that it is really injustice to a woman. She has just come out from one trauma, settling down in life with a new family, with husband and children. But sometimes we have forced them to go back. They weren't being rescued, they were being deported. Uh, no, they rescued. They, we kept, we informed their parents. The, the thing is to be, whole of summer, we used to do the integration, uh, to search. And in winter, uh, they used to go, attack the places and recover them by force. Could who, you follow? Who did, who did the attacking? Uh, attack, not attack, I won't say attack. In summers, the group of volunteers used to go, ladies used to go to some area. We have come to know that this area, there are some Muslim girls are there. So some ladies will go and sit there and say that, uh, I want to drink water. Okay, come, we we'll drink water. Uh, are you all happy? Yes, we are happy. I said, what about you? I said, what? You know, my husband has uh, uh, kidnapped, uh, uh, abducted a Muslim woman staying with us. Then this uh, the other lady of that area will say, oh, you know, in that house some Muslim girls, in that house some Muslim girls. This is how we used to get the informations. Did you know yourself? I went. I went in Bogle. I don't know you know Bogle. Bogle used to be a big uh, centre where lots of Muslim abducted women were there. That's right in Delhi. Yeah, right in Delhi. And but sometimes what used to happen, we used to get the news that women, Muslim women, abducted women are in this area in Delhi. When the after a few days we will come to know they have, have been disappeared, have been sent to the villages or somewhere or somewhere. But we had a very good uh, follow up action. We used to find out who were there. Now I will tell you one thing. I was giving some, only the important cases to deal with, top secret. Though I was very young, but uh, Ms. Raji had a faith in me. So some of the ministers, some high officials of uh, Kashmir and uh, Pakistan, I used to deal with those cases. And one girl, I remember, she was recovered after five years and we got the news that she is coming flying down from Bombay on such and such plane and Mirdaladi sent a car to me said at nine o'clock in the at the night and said you have to go to railway station uh, airport Rahat Tara is coming by such and such I said I haven't seen her how will I recognize her said, she's coming in a black borka so any woman coming in black borka is Rahat Tara I said how can I Get hold of her. No, no, the whole team will be there. So I went there. There were no lady with pork. I came back I was with great fear that she, I will get a big scolding from her. Then I said, I didn't find any um, women uh, coming out from um, aeroplane and work hard. She said, no, no, I'm sorry. I got the news that no, she has run away from there. You see, like that. So when, summer times, the informations were collected. Winter times to recover them because in winter in uh, northern India it is very severe cold. So they like to be indoors at night. So the recovery unit used to go with women and uh, men to recover these girls. Men police? Uh, not exactly. No. Special officers? Uh, um, retired police officers, retired army officers but not in uniform. The, I don't know. Uh, to, I, I never seen any pol uh, uh, police officer, officer or police went to recover. It was not that. Did you see Hindu girls who'd been recovered and brought back to Delhi? Yeah, many. Many. What's many. the uh, They used to come. Now, there's one uh, important thing. Uh, I will talk about, tell about the Muslims. We found, I found, the Muslim women were abducted by Jat. You know what is Jat? 
and Muslim women abducted by Sikh. Ha- hell of a difference. The women we were abdu- who were abducted by the Sikh, they never used to go- like to go back. But most of the women who were abducted by Jats, yes. they used to Hindu go back. Yeah. They, used to go, they wanted to go back, even after five years. So I used to ponder why. Then I, one day I asked, said, the Sikh, the, wo- the woman abducted by a Sikh, he said, you know, we Muslim women are kept absolutely in parda and this and that. We are so many restrictions. <coughs> Whereas Sikhs, we are, I have no restriction. I can eat with them, meat, fish, drink with them, go out in cycles, have a lovely time going out for picnic and this and that. Then I, that's why I don't want to go back. I want to die here. Because I have found that life is very colorful. But Jat, Jats, the girls who were abducted by the Jats, they used to say, I want to, we want to go back. Why? Because, you know, they are, they are not treating us as human beings. Whole household ladies, they said, she is an abducted, she is a Muslim, she is an abducted woman, she is nothing. And all the odd jobs we have to do, satisfy practically not only the abducted, abducted abductor, but other men folk of the family. Whereas six never did that. That difference I found. I have never spoken this to anybody, Andrews, I'm telling you. So these are the very sensitive points and how women faced all these things. Uh, I think it is terrible and horrible. It's not only the partition is horrible, the women of both sides suffered so much. It is something beyond anybody's conception. We talk a lot about partition, 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 lost, all the property, this, that, that. Nobody talk about the plight of the women. Can I ask?